Hello, hello. Welcome to another edition of TK's Two Cents. Today, we're going to talk about how to stop begging for their approval. But before we dive in, every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, unless I say otherwise, we've got a revolution of one live stream coming at you. TK's Two Cents is on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's when I take a couple of tweets and I riff on them, providing a little context respond to questions and comments that came in throughout the week. And then on Wednesdays, the revolution will be live stream. That's Kamau and I with a special guest talking about talking to interesting people doing interesting work and how you can borrow life insights from their interesting ideas. I'm really excited about tomorrow's show with uh, Minda Hartz, who is the author of the memo. And she's going to talk about why it's time to rewrite the memo, why it's time to reread the memo. Um, so tune in for that tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern time. All right, let's dive in. Oh, also one more little thing for those of you who go by the calendar, because I don't go by the calendar. I, 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 I'm down with this every single day of the week, every single day of the year. For those of you who go by the calendar, we are only 87 days away from Christmas. In the Coleman household, I play Christmas music every single day. Right now I'm bumping that Dean Martin Christmas album, uh, Dino's Christmas. This right here is a screenshot of Christmas blues because uh, I'm singing the Christmas blues right now since I got to wait 87 more days. But Christmas is a mentality in my world. Christmas is a mindset, you know. So uh, for those of you who go by the calendar, though, we don't have long to wait. Um, I'm looking forward to Christmas, but put on some Christmas music now. Spread a little holiday cheer any time of the year. Give yourself permission to do it. All right. Let's dive into these tweets and talk about begging. All right, tweet number one, don't beg people to like you. Don't beg people to endorse your product. If you have to beg them to like you, you'll have to beg them to keep liking you. It's not worth it. Respect who you are, respect what you have, let your character and work speak for itself. I once had a girl, or should I say she once had me. That's a line from Kurt Elling's Norwegian Wood. But uh, back in the day, back in the day, I used to date this girl, right? And maybe every couple of weeks or so, she would have a crisis where she would question the relationship. She would say, I don't know if I'm happy. I don't know, you know, if we should be together. And I would respond to that by doing the dumbest thing. I would give her a bunch of arguments for why our relationship was actually amazing and why she should stay. And I would say, well, let me give you the, the three reasons with two sub points apiece on why the relationship is amazing. And you want to know the most tragic thing about it? The most tragic thing was that it actually worked. It actually worked. She was persuaded by my logic and the light would return to her eyes and she would smile and everything would be OK until two weeks later or a month later. And she'd go through the same process. And in the proudest move I've ever made in my life, I got to a point where I said, you know, I get the impression that if I weren't arguing you into staying with me, that you'd probably leave. And it occurs to me that I actually don't want to be in a relationship where I have to talk someone into staying with me when they say they think they'd be happier leaving. I think you're wasting your time. I'm wasting your time. I'm wasting my time. We're making each other miserable all because of an argument for why we should be together. I think the kind of relationship I want to be in is one where the person I'm with is able to talk themselves into being with me without my assistance. Go do what you got to do. Go get the answers to your questions. Go figure out whatever you got to figure out. I'll be fine, we'll be fine, but let's not make each other miserable. That was a hard lesson for me because it took me so much time to get there, but it was one of the most powerful life altering lessons that I ever received. And that is don't ever beg. Don't ever beg. What do I mean by begging? Well, by begging, I mean approaching a situation in life whether it be a dating relationship, a friend, a friendship, a business deal, approaching it with a sense of scarcity, approaching it with a consciousness of, of lack, 
approaching it as if you are someone that has nothing to offer and the only way you can get anything good out of life is by begging and pleading with someone to do you a favor. And that is such a disempowering mindset. You know, sometimes when we think about the things that we want in life, we can we can desire those things so badly that we overlook the person that we become in the process of pursuing those things. And what I wanna talk with you about today is the importance of not just thinking about the things that you want to pursue, but thinking about the person that you become in the process of chasing after those things. Because sometimes you can go after the things you want in life in a way that compromises your dignity and self-respect so that by the time you get those things, you're not even happy anyway because you got what you wanted, but the person that you've become in the process is a person that you don't even like anymore, a person that you don't even respect anymore. Imagine that you have a job, for instance, and you're working at the job because you know the money's good, but every day your boss yells at you, your boss disrespects you, your boss makes you feel small, you feel like terrible, but you never speak up, you never stand up for yourself, you never complain, you never, you know, command any kind of respect for your dignity because you're scared to lose your job or you want to keep the money or something along those lines. Okay. You get to keep the job. You get to keep maybe the prestige that comes with it. You get to keep the money, but who do you become in the process of showing up every day as someone that doesn't stand up for themselves? Who do you become in the process of showing up every day as someone who's too afraid to say what they really think or what they really feel? And sometimes we think about going after what we want and how happy that will make us, but we don't think about the trade-offs that are involved in the pursuit. And what I wanna encourage you to do is to consider those trade-offs and make sure that the trade-off is never your soul. Reminds me of that verse in the Bible. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world, but to lose his soul? There is nothing in life that is so good that it's worth sacrificing the respect that you have for your own dignity. Now, you might wonder about this and say, but hey, wait a minute, man, aren't there moments in life where we are kind of in a position where we're dependent on someone else to do us a favor? We're in a position where we need someone to help us out because we don't have a whole lot to offer. Even when you're in those situations, make your requests known, articulate your needs with clarity, but don't beg. If, if someone's answer is, I'm not interested, or someone's answer is, I don't know, make your request from a place of confidence that says, hey, even though I would benefit from you helping me out in this way, I am confident enough in my path, in my purpose, in my potential, in my work ethic to know that I am eventually going to get there. I can get there faster with your help. I can have an easier time with your help. And that's why I'm here to request it. But if you give me a firm no, I'm gonna respect that no, and I'm gonna continue working towards my dream. But I'm not going to beg because that is signaling to myself and to the world that I don't really believe I have anything to offer. To offer. I don't really believe that I can do this thing. I don't really believe that I can make this thing happen in a variety of different ways. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is where Jesus says, it is better to give than to receive. On the surface, that sounds like an absurdity. Like, you know, if you have a need, surely it's better to receive than to give, right? I'd rather be the guy receiving $1,000 than the guy giving $1,000. But there's more to it than that. When you think about it, what does it take to be a giver? In order to be a giver, you have to see yourself as someone who has something to offer, right? Because you can't give unless you have something to offer. And so the very act of giving presupposes a mindset of abundance. You know, like I'm worth something, I possess something, I can make a positive difference in another person's life. There's value that being in a relationship with me brings to the table. Being a giver requires you to be mindful of those things. And whenever you approach any area of life with a mindset of abundance, looking at yourself as someone who's worthy of respect, as someone whose time is valuable, as someone who creates value for others, that area of life is going to work out better for you than if you just see yourself as someone who is solely at the mercy of external conditions, 
of other people's choices. So even when you are in a situation where it feels like you don't have anything to offer, I would rather you question the assumption that you have nothing to offer than to beg from a state of mind as if you lack any value whatsoever. When you make a request, when you express a need, when you ask for the things that you want, always do so from a place of self-love and self-respect. Never sell yourself short in life. There are more options for creating the results that matter most to you than you realize. And sometimes when you compromise your dignity to get the things that you want, yeah, you experience some relief and satisfaction in the short term, but in the long term, it turns out to be a bigger headache than you may have ever wished for. Because when you beg people to like you, when you beg them to go along with you, well, now you gotta beg them to be happy with the thing that you asked them to go along with. You know, it's like if I invite a friend to go to the movies, like come to the movies with me, man, it's gonna be a fun time. If I gotta sit there and beg you 15 minutes to go, guess what's gonna happen? We go to the movies, if you don't like it, I'm gonna have to beg you to not regret the experience. I'm gonna have to beg you to laugh at all the funny scenes. That's not even a good time for me, right? If I gotta beg you, it's better for me to be epic all by myself than to be lonely with somebody else. Don't beg. If you need something, be honest about the need, but be honest in a way that respects your own dignity. Let's go to the next tweet. Once again, every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern time, Revolution of One live streams. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, TK is two cents. And on Wednesdays, the Revolution will be live streamed with Kamau and I interviewing a special guest. Tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern time, we've got Minda Hearts in the house, the author of the memo. Be sure to tune in. All right, how about this one here? You're not an artist unless, you're not a writer unless, you're not an entrepreneur unless, you're not a good person unless, there is always someone eager to make you irrelevant by definition, their definition. Ignore them and focus on creating the results that matter most to you. You know, there are some interesting statements I've heard over the years about what it really means to be a certain thing. And I'm so glad that I have ignored those statements because had I not ignored them, I would not have experienced the wonderful benefits of giving myself permission to do the things that are interesting to me in spite of not meeting other people's qualifications. Here's some statements I've heard over the years. Statements like, you're not a writer, unless you have been paid to write. Oh my gosh, I'm glad I never listened to that one because I gave myself permission to show up and write every single day for three years, barely having any readers or subscribers, and I hadn't been paid a dime for writing. Yes, I eventually became paid for that sort of thing, but I spent far more time not getting paid. I often say, you, you'll never get paid to do something if you wait until you get paid to do it. I don't know how people deal with these kinds of belief systems of not giving themselves permission to do something uh, until they have proven that they have become something. I just showed up and I just wrote. Sometimes it was good. Sometimes it was decent. Sometimes it was bad. But I was willing to show up and do the thing, even though there was no one crowning me with the authority to be the thing. I've heard people say things like, you're not an artist unless you're doing it full time. You're not an entrepreneur unless you've actually raised money from someone else to finance your business. You're not an entrepreneur if you have raised money from someone else to find a business. You're not an entrepreneur unless you've actually financed it with your own capital or you started on a shoestring budget, you bootstrapped, and you began to make profits in the short term enough to keep you sustainable. You're not a good person unless you put this sign up in your yard. You're not a good person unless you vote in that direction. You're not a good person unless you stand in solidarity and unless you stand in this particular well-defined way. So many people have definitions for what it means to be this, what it means to be that. And what that means for you is no matter what you do, there will always be unsettled debates about who you really are. There will always be unsettled debates about your status. You wanna make movies? Doesn't matter how many you make, there are always gonna be people that will say, you're not a real filmmaker. You know, you're not a real cinematic genius. You wanna be a writer? 
no matter how much you write, no matter who you write for, what you write about, there will always be people that are like, yeah, you're not a real writer. Because to me, a real writer is A, B, C, X, Y, Z, whatever it may be. Avoid the trap of debating your status. Debating your status is a distraction from the work. Creativity isn't about your ontological status. It's not about who you are. It's about what you're committed to showing up and doing. Creativity is not a state of being. Creativity is a set of actions that you take based on your principles, your preferences, and your priorities. It's about what you do. There are people in this world who feel proud of themselves because I am a writer. I am an actor. I am an entrepreneur. And they feel so proud of themselves for their status and they haven't even created anything. They haven't done anything. They haven't put anything out there that the world can see, that the world can verify, that the world can interact with, that the world can engage with in any way. But hey, I am a creative. I am an entrepreneur. And look, my goal isn't to mock those people. My goal is to help you stop letting those kind of people mock you. You don't need the world to take a majority vote on your status in order to give yourself permission to show up and create the results that matter most to you. No one else needs to see you as being interesting in order for you to do the things that you find to be interesting. Forget about other people's labels, forget about other people's definitions, because there will always be de debates about those. Control the one thing that is in your power, and that is what do you show up and do today? And that's the mindset that makes you free to stop begging for other people's approval. Peace out. I'll see you tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern time.